Hey everybody, it's time for a book haul. I have a stack of books here that are ready to get from my house to your TBR. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope, as always, as I always say, I hope you guys are very, very well. I hope you're safe. If you are in California and you're part of the um, stay at home order that's going on, I hope that you are doing better than I in regards to the getting slightly tired of being in our own homes. Um, but it's going well and I cannot complain. I hope you're all healthy and I hope that everyone is doing well. Um, and I hope for all of our sakes that this doesn't last as much longer, but it lasts as long as it needs to for us all to be safe. So today I'm going to be doing a book haul of books sent to me by publishers. Now, with all of the businesses sort of closing the doors and everybody working from home, um, I don't know if I'll be getting any books from publishers moving forward, um, but I want to celebrate the ones that they were able to get to me over the last 30 days or so. And there are some amazing titles here. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, get out however you keep track of your TBR. And if you are so able, please, please order these from your local independent bookstore. Um, just as another a side note, I am not sponsored by Scrib at all, um, but it is an app that is sort of like a Netflix for books, for audiobooks. Um, I did recognize on Twitter they noted that um, they are giving a free 30-day trial away um, for people during this time. So if you are not a person, I pay for it. I love it. It's one of my favorite apps that I use. Um, highly recommend it. If your library is currently closed and you're unable to get books, this is a way maybe you can just use the 30-day trial to get yourself some books and read during this time. So those are my little options and all of that. So let's get started. The first book I'm actually reading right now, I'm almost done with it. I actually have like less than 100 pages left. And that is The Animals of Lockwood Manor by Jane Healy. This actually has a phenomenal UK cover. This was sent to me by HMH. I like this cover a lot and it makes a lot of sense when you read the book, but the UK cover is gorgeous. Um, this is sort of a gothic Victorian type tale, but it is not set in Victorian type times. It's set in the 1939, right before the World War started. We are in London and we are with Haiti. Haiti, H-E-T-T-Y. I'm saying Haiti. I'm not sure that's how it's pronounced. Hetty, maybe? Um, she works at the London Museum of Natural History. And what has happened is all of the exhibits from that museum are being moved to manors across um, England in order to protect it from bombing that may occur in London. She winds up at Lockwood Manor. Who, which is owned by Major Lockwood, who is sort of this, um, he's not a very nice guy, let's just put it this way. And he lives with his young daughter, Miss Lucy uh, Lockwood. Um, she suffers from night terrors, and just recently, both her mother and grandmother were killed in a car crash. Uh, what we sort of learn is that there are secrets in the household. The household is having a trouble. It's a ginormous manor. It's having a trouble keeping servants for a couple reasons. The war is taking people away. And also there's sort of this ghost tale um, and this idea that maybe parts of the house are haunted. Um, and it's really a story about how, how Haiti and um, Lucy and their friendship and how they sort of come together in this time and how both of them have really struggled to have solo friendships with females um, in their lives with different women. Um, they have different circumstances, um, which you learn about in the book. I'm loving it. I think it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. So that's The Animals of Lockwood Manor by Jane Healy out from HMH. And I believe this came out on March 17th, so you can get your hands on it now. I am really liking it. I'm currently reading it. The next is an essay collection that was sent to me by One World, and that is Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong, a collection of essays subtitled An Asian American Reckoning. This deals with identity, po politics, relationships, um, and uh, all sorts of different arts, identity, individuality, and just making your way through the world. Um, I've read the first essay actually already in this collection. It is very, very good, and I'm excited to see where it goes from there. So that is Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong, An Asian American Reckoning. This is actually out now, too, from One World, okay? Next is a book that comes out on April 7th from my friends over at Catapult. Now get ready, because this cover is sparkly. And that is Godshot by Chelsea 
Beaker, B-I-E-K-E-R. I will hold that up there for you guys. This is blurbed by my friend Leslie Zumas. You guys know I loved Red Clocks. Kristen Arnett and T. Kiera Madden. So that is quite a blurb list. If you are a fan of my channel, you'll know that those are four, uh, three women that I... Yeah, I trust their opinion. Uh, Godshot is the story of a young woman. Her name is Lacey May. She lives in um, part of uh, Peaches, California, which is part of our Central Valley. This is sort of like a dystopian world where that part of the agriculture has just died away. It used to be bountiful and plentiful, and now it's gone. And in moves this pasture, this pasture Vern, who is a cult-like leader that has this promise of bringing rain back and bringing back the fruit, uh, fruitful nature of this area. And her mom and her four to fall into it. Her mom is an alcoholic, struggles with things. And one day her mom is kicked out of the community for her sins and Lacey May is left there. She winds up moving in with her grandmother who has a taxidermy mice collection. Sounds fascinating. Um, and Lacey May soon finds out that Pastor Vern and the men of the community have, their, have an idea of how they're going to create this um, fruitfulness, let's put it that way, and bring vitality back. Um, so she decides to leave, and she goes on a hunt. She wants to find her mother, and all she has to guide her are romance novels and the women who knew her mom, and she goes on this adventure. So it's sort of a cult slash dystopian slash coming of age, coming of... Um, understanding of your mother, of your parent, all of that kind of stuff. All I know is that um, Elizabeth over at Catapult, who I trust very much, r is telling me that this is one of their most anticipated books of the year. And so that is Godshot by Chelsea Beaker, and this is out on April 7th. That's one to get on your list. It's a good book to read, right? I am so excited that Jane Austen is sort of having this renaissance right now. You guys know I just read The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. It comes out in May. Really, really, really loved it. Um, and out now is Miss Austen by Gil Hornby. This is out from Flatiron Books. This is actually the story of Cassandra Austen, the sister of Jane Austen. About 20 years after her passing, she has been doing all of this work to protect her sister's legacy. And what happens is she's in her 60s. She's sort of frail. Um, she moves to a household run by her ex-fiance in order to search down letters, letters that supposedly belong to her sister. And as she comes into contact with them, she realizes that not only will they tell Jane Austen's life story, but they'll tell secrets about Cassandra's life story as well. And she has to make a decision. Does she want her life out there just like her sister's is out there consistently? So I think that sounds great. I love books about authors, famous authors. I love when we take on that historical narrative. Um, and I adore Jane Austen, so I think that sounds really fun. So that is Miss Austen by Gil Hornby out from Flatiron Books, and you guys can get your hands on this now. I really love the end, the end papers are like handwritten letters. Yeah, I'm d digging this one. Excited for this one. Okay, next is a book that is currently long listed for the Women's Prize out here from Random House, and that is Gin Portal on the Purple Line by Deepa Anapara. And this is um, the story of a nine-year-old. Let me get his name real quick, Jai. Jai lives at the end of the Purple Line railway line, and he lives in a place where um, it's very uh, poverty-stricken. You know, it's not the... Um, upscale part of the end of the line. Um, and his mom works sort of in the city, the expensive part that he can seize on the horizon. She works over there as a maid. And what happens is that a child goes missing and Jai and two of his friends decide that they're going to investigate it because no one else seems to be taking the child's disappearance seriously. So they create these lists. They're going to ask these things. They're going to find these people. They're going to do their investigation. And as they're doing that, more and more children are disappearing. I think what it says is what, but what begins as a game turns sinister as other children start disappearing from the neighbors, neighborhood. The three children have to confront terrified parents and a different police force and rumors of soul snatching gins. As the disappearance edge over closer to home, the lives of Jai and his friends will never be the same. So this is blurbed by Anne Enright and Ian McEwen and Chigozi Obioma. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. He was shortlisted for the booker, I think, twice for both of his books. Um, and yeah, so I'm super, super excited about this one. And I think um, 
I just heard someone review it and they really, really liked it. Sorry, it's blanking on my head, but I'm excited about that one. Out now. You can get that one out now. Okay. Last of the hardbacks that I'm going to talk about is also out now, and that is Deacon King Kong by James McBride. James McBride probably needs no introduction. His book, The Good Lord Bird, was everywhere, and it won the National Book Award, and I believe it won the Tournament of Books, so it was everywhere. Um, and I'm super excited about this one, actually. So this is the story. It's set in 1969 inside Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn. And, uh, and we have a preacher, a pastor, a deacon, who goes up and point blank in the middle of the day shoots and kills the local drug dealer in the neighborhood. What this book deals with is not only what brought the deacon to do that, what brought them to uh, him to make that decision and to pull that trigger, but also the effects that shooting has not only on the people directly involved, but on the periphery and how it affects um, the community, all aspects of the community. I think it sounds pretty brilliant. I think this cover is fantastic. And that is Deacon King Kong by James McBride. I'm super excited about this one. I've been trying to read more. Um, have you guys found, so this is what I'm finding staying at home. Um, I eat more, I snack all the time, and I'm not usually a snacker at work. Um, I take way more naps than I have ever taken in my entire life. Um, and I watch more TV. I don't know why. And reading for some reason, I'm doing it. I'm definitely getting through books. Um, but um, all these other things are sort of competing for time. It's really interesting. Okay, let's get, keep going so that this uh, list does not get, this video doesn't get too long. The next book is coming out on June 2nd, 2020. And that is, I'm going to hold this up here. The Last Great Road Bum, a novel by Hector Tobar. And this is coming out from MCD at FSG. So this book is actually based on the real life of a gentleman. His name is Joe Sanderson. And he lived his life in pursuit of just doing tons of different things. And it says here that he was born in Illinois and he actually died fighting alongside gorillas in, in Central America. Um, and what has happened is Hector Tobar actually came into um, possession of Joe um, Sanderson's personal archives, and he has created this fictional narrative based upon those archives. So I feel like if you like On the Road, if you like those books that are about one person and their life, I'm thinking like, uh, what is William Boyd's book that I can't remember the title of? A Human Heart. You know, those books that sort of focus on a person and take us through their life journey. I feel like this book would speak to you, but it sort of has sort of a masculine, evil, Knievel feel to me. I don't know why. That's just what I'm saying. Um, but I think it sounds really good. So that's The great, the Last Great Road Bum by Hector Tobar. And this is out again on June 2nd, 2020 from MCD FSG. Hector Tobar is a journalist by trade, I think. I'm pretty sure. So I, I wonder if it's going to have sort of that feel to it. So yeah, I'm excited about that one too. Okay. This is a piece of nonfiction sent to me by Grey Wolf Press, and that is To the Lake, A Balkan Journey of War and Peace by Kapka Kasabova. I'm saying that, I'm trying. Um, and this takes place, this is actually sort of like a historical dive into a location. It's between the Lake Ohrid and Lake Prespa, two ancient lakes joined by underground rivers. Two lakes that seem to hold both the turbulent memories of the region's past and the secret of its enduring allure. Two lakes that have played a central role in Kafka's maternal family. So she goes and she investigates this area, but also from the point of view of her grandmother, I believe. Um, I'm 90% sure it's the grandmother. But it also turns out to be important as she investigates the land and the world and the just the whole system, sort of this ecosystem and historical place and how it created her world. So I actually think she wrote The Border and the Border, I think, was her big book. Um, and I think um, it got rave reviews. And I think this sounds really interesting. So that's To the Lake, a Balkan Journey of War and Peace by Kapka Kasabova. And this is out from Grey Wolf on August 4th, 2020. Gosh, that's far out there, but it will be here before we know it. 
Um, Graham Swift is an author that needs very little introduction. He has done very well in his lifetime. Um, he won the Booker Prize for The Last Order. Um, and yeah, I've read a couple of books by him. And he has a new book coming out in April from Knopf. And that is Here We Are by Graham Swift. And I was trying to find an actual date in April. So I apologize. I do not have the actual date. Um, this is the story. So this is set in 1959 on a pier in England. We have a magician, we have his assistant, a young woman assistant, and we have sort of a man who is uh, the, oh, what is, I'm totally blanking, master of ceremonies, goodness, goodness gracious. Um, and they are really, they're putting on a show and their name is known out there. But of course, the drama that occurs between the three of them uh, winds up overshadowing the success that they're having in their show. Um, so yeah, it's a short little book. It is not very long at all. It is 180 something pages. Um, but he has a tendency to write short books that pack quite a punch. So that's Here We Are by Graham Swift out now, uh, not out now, out from Knopf. This comes out in April, 2020. That cover is rather beautiful, rather beautiful, like art almost. Okay, I am actually super thrilled about this book. I don't know. It's not a me book, but there's a lot of stuff about it that I absolutely think is going to be fantastic. And that is, I'm going to hold this up here, um, and it's Ms. Moore Goes Missing, and it's a Zofa, Zofia Turban, I can't even say that, but it's a mystery. And it is blurbed on the front by Olga, um, who won the Nobel Peace Prize. Nobel Peace Prize. Nobel Prize for Literature. I am a mess with this book, and here's the reason why. So here's your author, right? This is actually the pseudonym for a gay couple. Um, they are partners Jacques Donhell and Peter, and again, Tarzanicki? I'm sorry. Um, now, Jacques has actually written books before, and this is the first book for um, Peter. Set in 1893 in Krakow, Poland, this is the story of this woman. Her name is Sofia. She lives this life of privilege. She goes to all of these different events. She goes to fundraisers um, and um, decides one day when a murder occurs that she's going to become a detective. And that is what she's going to do. And no one is taking her seriously. And what I love, it says, ridiculed by the police who have declared the death that she's investigating a natural cause. She starts her own murder investigation unbeknownst to anyone but her loyal cook, Francesca, and one reluctant nun. Do you need more than that? I don't need more than that. I think that sounds so much fun. So this is uh, Mrs. Moore Goes Missing by Marla Zimek. Yeah, I'm going to hold that up there. My Polish is awful. Awful. Um, and again, this is a pseudonym for a couple. And I think it sounds so much fun. And I'm pretty sure that this is actually out now. I think you can get your hands on it. And it is translated from the Polish. I almost forgot to name the translator. Russell, what are you doing? Translator from the Polish by Antonia Lloyd-Jones. She translated, hold on, I think she's, isn't she the one who translated Olga's last book here in the U.S.? I'm pretty sure. Didn't she do um, Drive the Plow? Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I'm super excited. I think that sounds like a ton of fun. Okay, only two more. This is Creatures of Charm and Hunger by Molly Tanzer. And this is out in, on April 21st from Mariner. I'll hold that up to you. This is actually the third book in a uh, fantasy series, a witch series. Um, and I'm going to just sort of tell you what it's about. So it's in the waning days of World War II. The, um, and it says, across the English Channel... Um, tucked in the sleepy Cumbrian countryside lies the library, the repository of occult knowledge for the Soci Society des Eclairs, an international organization of diabolists. There, best friends Jane and Miriam, tutored by the society's librarian, or Jane's mother, Nancy, prepare to undergo the test that will determine their future in the organization. When Miriam learns that her missing parents are sus uh, suspected of being betraying the society to the Nazis, she embarks on a quest to clear their names, a quest involving dangerous, diabolical practices that will demand more of her than she can ima imagine. Meanwhile, Jane, struggling with dark obsessions of her own, embraces a forbidden use of the art that could put everyone she loves 
in danger. So this is book three in the series. I think it sounds like a super, super good, fun time. And that is Creatures of Charm and Hunger by Molly Tanzer out now, or out on April 21st from Mariner. Gosh, I'm having a hard time even saying when books are out. Last but not least is another book that is coming from Harper Via. Now, Harper Via is their sort of their international um, line of Harper. They're publishing a lot of books in translation. And this book actually comes out of um, Australia. And this is called The Yield by Tara June Winch. And this is coming out in June 2020. Let me see if I have a specific. just says June on it. Um, and I'll show you guys. This is what the cover is going to look like. Okay, I'm going to read this one because this one needs to be read. Knowing he will die soon, Albert Poppy Gonda, Gonda Windy takes pen to paper. He has spent his life on the banks of the Murabi River at Prosperous House in the rural Australian town of Massacre's Plain. Albert is determined to pass on the language of his people, the indigenous were were a jury so w i r a d j u r i tribe and everything that was ever remembered by the ancestors he finds the words on the wind after 10 years adrift in europe august returns home from her grandfather's burial racked with grief and burdened with all she's tried to leave behind confronted by the love of her kin and news that prosperous will be repossessed by a mining company August begins to remember who she once was and dream of who she could be. Determined to make amends for leaving and to right history's wrong, she endeavors to save their land, leading her through the voice of her grandfather into the past. Told in three masterful woven narratives, the yield is a powerful reclaiming of an indigenous language and an offering of hope for the future. And it says up here, it says, in a heartbreaking yet hopeful saga of the First Nations family reclaiming its identity as a granddaughter discovers her future in the words of her grandfather. I love everything about that. So that's The Yield by Tara June Winch out from Harper Via in June 2020. Okay, so that was a big stack of books. I hope every single one of them wound up on your TBR. As always, if you are a turn subscriber, please, please, please know I appreciate you so very much. Please comment down below. Let's talk in the comments. Um, comments are really how videos get out there and I wanna talk to you guys. If you are new to my channel, I hope you guys like this video and you come back for more. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye.